in a week spent with the top trim 2024 Platinum Plus all-wheel drive Nissan Aria, I found high style, roominess, and comfort. It's a nice vehicle. I'm Tom Volk for the Seattle International Auto Show, and you probably want to know how far this goes on a charge. The EPA rates the range of this particular Aria at 267 miles. I drove it 250 and still had 20 miles left, so yeah, pretty much spot on. However, uh, those were ideal conditions, about half city driving, half highway driving at around 60, 65 miles an hour, and temperatures around the mid 70s. But what about road tripping? Putting my money where my mouth is, I'm taking Aria from Seattle to Eastern Washington. Ulta Lake State Park, to be precise. It's 220 miles from my house. Very doable. The trick is getting back since it's remote. Charging is okay along interstates in Washington. It gets iffy on the back roads. Aria's connected navigation will suggest charge stops. Route planning is a cinch. Hey, Nissan. Please say or select a command. I need directions to Ulta Lake State Park. Showing matching locations. I'll second guess it since this is new to me and uh, my wife is riding shotgun. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Gentlemen, what? catch my drift. Researching terminal locations to be safe. There are a number of off-brand locations along the way, but honestly, I lack trust and don't want to load new apps. Aria has a spacious cabin, and platinum trims get suede materials plus heated and vented Napa leather chairs. So other than range anxiety, this is a great way to cover distance. Check out my full review for the details. For now, I'll say it's stuffed with features, borderline luxury grade. We won't have anyone back here, but it's quite roomy. It's easier to throw everything that might be needed in back instead of curating the camping gear. Seats up, there's 23 cubic feet. Dropped, it's 60. So even stuffing coolers of food, games, hiking gear, a big air mattress, a stove, a six-man tent, and camp chairs ends up to be a walk in the state park. We're meeting six others, rendezvousing for lunch in Wenatchee, 165 miles away. Fully charged, that should be easy. However, Seattle is at sea level and crossing Snoqualmie Pass at 3,000 feet will tax the pack. So will speeds of 75 to 80 miles an hour if I'm going to keep up with traffic. Okay, 150 miles into the trip. Yay or nay, you like this or not? No, oh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. Yeah. I think the best thing is how quiet it is. It's very quiet. Yeah. So we can listen to our podcast really easily. Wait, wait, don't tell me. Doug Berman, benevolent overlord. Yes. Especially wait, wait, don't tell me. Yes. Yeah. It's comfortable too. It's very comfortable. Very comfortable. The interior design is, is very nice. I like that too. It's different. Yeah. The vented seats keep our backsides fresh, and zero vibration from the powertrain reduces fatigue. Aria is supremely comfortable. As expected, pushing the battery means 72 miles of range left after covering 165 miles. No anxiety. I pull into a Ford dealership which has a Ford Pass charger, new to me. The Chargeway app says it takes credit cards, so I cross my fingers and hope for the best. Authorizing. And it works flawlessly. That's seldom the case. The only issue, it's slow. Aria's pokey 130 kilowatt max charge rate is moot since this terminal delivers only 50 kilowatts, tops. This actually works since we're lunching. My friend Corey picks me up and we drive to this place that I'll recommend. And in the hour it takes to scarf down excellent chili relleno and tamales, Aria is topped off. Corey drops me off and we're good to go. Hey Corey, thanks for the ride. You're welcome. I could have easily made it all the way to Ulta Lake and then back to Wenatchee before I needed to charge, but I didn't want to take any chances. The infrastructure along the interstate, I-90, 
is actually pretty decent. But once you get out into rural areas like this, not so much. The return trip plan is to pass through Wenatchee, top off for good measure, and breeze on home. So I'm feeling pretty good, and Mariko thinks I've planned this out. ProPilot Assist 2.0 makes the trip easier with confident lane keeping. It goes miles in some cases without touching the wheel or pedals. On this stretch, it's more insistent about hands on the tiller, like Toyota's and Kia's tech. A monitor makes sure the driver is paying attention. Every so often, it would ask me to put my hands back on the wheel when they were already on the wheel. ProPilot Assist isn't as comprehensive as Super Cruise or Blue Cruise, but it's definitely making this trip more relaxing. Mach-E and Equinox EV have an advantage there. Soon enough, we roll into camp, and what a lovely sight it is. A bit windy, though. Nice, you guys are doing a great job. Our site has water, but no electricity. Cars are not the only things needing charging these days. Why pump by hand, huh? Phones, toothbrushes, lights, they all need charging. Ultimately, there's no need to worry about range in this case. In a pinch, I could pay $40 for an RV site and tap into 240 volt power. The included charge cord is switchable between that and 120. Everyone in the group has an SUV-like vehicle. Heck, the whole campsite, really. Sport Ute practicality is why Americans love them. Aria is rated to tow 1,500 pounds, but range would have been slashed. Turns out I would have not made it back to Wenatchee without charging, since I wrangled Corey and his van into car-to-car -car shot duty, burning off 25 miles of range. While we were turning around in the town of Pateros, we spotted these. The Chargeway app had located them, but I figured they'd be nothing but a hassle. Turns out the experience is better than the Ford dealership, 175 kilowatts. Normally, non-subscribers would pay 49 cents a kilowatt. These were chargers that weren't charging, uh, money that is. Even better than the location, the electricity is free. Pretty sure the Chevron station across the street has never given their gas away. I sent Corey back to camp and stuck around to fill up. Remember that all EVs charge at a much slower pace once they hit 80%, and then if people are waiting, it's time to give up the plug to them. It's good etiquette. But with the place to myself, I returned a few emails, got a donut, Heck, I could have voted if I was registered in this county. Uh, yeah, Aria's 130 kilowatt max charge rate is slow compared to the competition, but if you don't road trip much or can't find a powerful terminal, none of this matters. The trip was great. The food was top shelf. It's important to make good cooks your friends. And while there was some hassle locating charging off the interstate, I'd know exactly what to do when coming back. Also, the lovely and charming claims she was never worried about running out of battery power. This should apply to any EV that's range rated similarly to Aria's 267 miles. We drove straight home from Ulta Lake, covering 209 miles with 35 in reserve. Not bad, considering hard driving on mountainous roads averaging 75 miles an hour two-thirds of the way. Aria's comfort was ideal for covering miles, but I get it, road tripping an electric vehicle isn't for everyone. Truth is, in Washington State, I find going the distance a doable thing with just a little bit of research. Before buying, check the routes that you would normally travel and have a plan B, just in case. I recommend the Chargeway app, which I used. Check out my full review of the Aria. That's a separate video. It's worth heading down to your local Nissan showroom for a test drive. At the very least, it'll be extremely comfortable. For the Seattle International Auto Show, I'm Tom Volk.